How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're going to be replacing a steering sector gear kit on a John Deere D170 riding lawnmower. So with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, guys. So in the shop today, I have this John Deere D170 with a 54-inch cutting deck. And my customer said that when he turns the steering wheel, he notices occasionally there is a clicking noise and the front wheels just simply don't turn. All right, so before we get to the focus of today's video, I just want to briefly walk you through how this steering system is set up, because for the most part, all of the John Deere's are going to be very similar. For the most part, you're going to have these plastic bushings, and there's normally going to be one on the bottom and one on the top of your steering shaft. That goes through the center console, and as you turn your steering wheel, it turns the shaft, and at the bottom of the shaft is going to be this pinion gear right here. So... When you turn the steering wheel, it rotates that pinion gear, which comes into contact with the sector plate, which is right there. Now on both ends of the sector plate, there are going to be what's called a drag link, and those are your steering arms that connect down to the front steering spindles. And normally on the ends of those, you guys are gonna have a tie rod end to give you adjustability so that you can adjust the toe in or toe out, pretty much the alignment of your front wheels. Now, because the majority of these John Deere's are built the same, they tend to run into the same issues, and one of them is going to be with these plastic bushings here. So once the inside of that plastic bushing starts to wear out, it allows the steering shaft to get play, and you'll notice your steering shaft will start to wobble. However, once that steering shaft gets enough play, it will actually allow the pinion gear to start to move away from the sector plate. So when you go to turn, the teeth don't seat all the way in together. And as you can imagine, it starts to wear down the teeth of both the pinion gear and the sector plate. If your worn bushings on the steering shaft are left too long, you'll end up having to replace both the pinion gear and the sector plate in a steering repair kit. Now, if you guys wanna buy a steering sector gear kit for your John Deere D170, you guys can buy these on Amazon. The part number for this specific model is going to be a GX2585 BLE. Now you guys can buy those steering sector gear kits from Amazon, but Stens sells them as well. The majority of kits, and I mean like 99% of them, are going to include the sector plate, the pinion gear, the two plastic steering shaft bushings, as well as the main bushing here for the sector plate pivot point. However, I wanted to show you guys the difference between the two kits that Sten sells. Sten's version is basically like the Amazon versions. However, if we look at the Atlantic, you guys are going to notice that they include an extra bolt and it does appear to be a shoulder bolt. So I can only assume that in the Atlantic Canada version, they include that number 24, which is the shoulder bolt that you need for the sector plate. Now, the sector plate is manufactured from steel, and they are relatively hard when compared to these pinion gears. These things are like powdered metal, and then they're basically pressed and heated up to make the part that you see now. They're not billet steel, and as far as I know, they're not cast either. These things are incredibly soft. However, I have two different ones here. One is from Amazon and the other one is an OEM one from John Deere. And we're going to be seeing which one of the two is harder than the other because that's the one that I'm going to be using on this John Deere D170. So I'm up underneath the John Deere and I'll try to give you guys an idea of what happens. The soft metal pinion gear just starts to wear away and you have to replace those more frequently than the sector plate, which again is made from a harder steel. Now, on some of the older Craftsman's and even some of the MTD ones, they made the bottoms cut out and they also made the tops cut out. And the area in which the sector plate lined up to the pinion gear was off center, which allowed you to simply remove the pinion gear, flip it upside down and reinstall it. And you essentially double the life of the soft metal pinion gear. In the case of John Deere, however, you guys can see that one of the sides is splined. However, the other side is not. So these can only be installed in one direction. So once that thing wears out, it has to be replaced. The part number from John Deere for the pinion gear is a GX20053. 
and one of these pinion gears is harder than the other. Now I want to use the harder pinion gear because it should last longer. So how are we going to test the hardness of the two metals here? Well, in front of me, I have a spring-loaded center punch. And what we're going to be doing is using this tool here to strike both pinion gears so that it puts a divot with the point there into the soft metal pinion gears. And whichever pinion gear has a larger dimple, that will signify the softer metal. Now, to adjust the center punch, all you have to do is hold on to it, and then you can rotate the end here. There's a spring inside of it, and once you load this thing up, it has a striker that hits the bottom end here. I don't know if you guys can tell. This one appears to have a little bit of rust on it. And it appears to be a little more rough shape. The one from John Deere appears to be very smooth and shiny as if it has been maybe burnished or put through a tumbler. But what we're gonna do is just put the center punch right about there. And I'm just gonna press down until it clicks. That's it. Next up, we're going to do the one right beside it. Same thing, just pushing down until we hear the click. There's the one from Amazon. And there's the one from John Deere. The one from John Deere barely looks like it has any deformity to it, maybe a little bit. Whereas the one from Amazon definitely has a deep dimple in it. So I'm going to be using, obviously, the OEM one. Why wouldn't I? Again, part number GX20053. You can get these kits on Amazon for way less than what they cost at John Deere. But again, they're going to be using cheaper materials. So you're going to have to probably replace them more frequently. So I've cleaned everything up from up top of there. Everything's just sitting on the deck right now. I've disconnected the belt from the pulley. And what we're gonna do is remove the guide bolt right there. That's a 14 mil. And then remove the 15 millimeter bolt right there. That's what holds the sector plate onto the lower chassis bracket. And then you can drop the sector plate with the drag links still connected, and then that'll give you enough room to remove the nuts. Now, it might be a little difficult, but you can get a 14 millimeter closed end wrench or opened end wrench in there, I guess, and that guide bolt will come right out. Next up is going to be a 15 millimeter stubby wrench. I'm using a combination, so it's opened and closed. Once again, guys, I'm doing all of this with the 54 inch mower deck still on the machine. You don't have to do that. You can remove the mower deck. You could even put this thing up on a lift. It would make it a lot easier, but I'm just showing you guys it can be done. So what I like to do is simply loosen that bolt for the sector plate so that it just gives you enough room to go in there with a wrench and then you can remove the drag links. It's gonna be a 17 mil for the top and a 13 mil for the bottom. Repeat the same steps for the other drag link and then you can finish off loosening the bolt to remove the sector plate. So with the sector plate removed, this is upside down. You guys can see how the metal gets deformed. So the gear is pretty much not even going to mesh. Additionally, we have, as I'm taking this apart, the bolt here. There was a washer on top of it, and then there's this bushing here. So I'm just gonna double check the parts diagram. You always wanna do that so that if it's not supposed to run this washer, well, then we won't run the washer. But if it's supposed to have it, then we'll use it on the new bushing and the new sector plate. So I'll put an image up on screen. You guys can see to the left there, we have 25 and 24. So the washer does in fact go over top of that little bushing there. And then the sector plate goes on top of it. And when I'm putting this back together, I am using just a little bit of marine grease so that everything slides nice and smooth. Once again, teeth facing down and we'll get this installed. So I got the new sector plate installed. Again, we greased everything. I just wanna show you guys that uh, it rotates nice and smooth, but there is going to be a little bit of play to it, as well as a little bit of play to the steering shaft, but the insides of the bushings are not worn. That little bit of play is between the bushing and the frame itself. 
I can't really fix that. Now that I've showed you guys that, I backed the bolt off of the sector plate so that I can have enough room to install the drag links. So the new sector plate is installed, drag links are installed. Next up, you can either do the guide bolt or the pinion gear. I'm gonna do the pinion gear. I've already got some nickel anti-seize on the shaft so that if I ever have to do this repair again, well, that gear will just slip right off. But as long as the spline is lined up, you should be able to tighten it up. Now, what I pulled off from this machine was a bolt, a little shoulder bushing right there. And then there was like this thrust washer underneath it. So on the left rear of the machine underneath the fender here, you guys are gonna see the model number on the side of the chassis. And you guys are gonna notice that the last six numbers of that product identification number are underlined. That's going to be your serial number. So the serial number for this unit is a 220503, meaning it's under 700,000. So I'm just here in the office on the computer looking up some parts for this John Deere. And I just wanted to take the time to show you guys the difference between using Google and using the actual John Deere website to properly source your parts. So for example here, I've typed into Google John Deere D170 parts diagram steering. And if we come over here, you're going to notice that they have two different diagrams. One of the diagrams shows one sector plate with two number 31 washers on top of the sector plate guide bolt. And then there's also a second diagram for the same D170 that shows only one washer, number 34 there, being used on that sector plate guide bolt. However, you're going to notice that there's now two different sector plates shown, a 21A and a 21B, which appears to have removable teeth on the front of it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to properly source your parts so that you don't buy the wrong parts for your equipment. So coming back to Google, you can simply type in John Deere parts. And then because I'm here in Canada, I will be going to deer.ca. So we're gonna click on that. That's their official website. Now up at the top here, it's gonna say parts and service. You're gonna go over here to parts and you're gonna click on that. You're gonna click lawn and garden because we're looking for riding lawnmower parts. Now from here, we can scroll down and they give you an option to either order parts or find parts. What we're looking for is the parts catalog. Basically, you're just gonna search by model number and you're gonna click here and type in your product number, which includes the serial number at the end. Once you have that information there, it will take you to John Deere's official parts diagram catalog for that entire mower. Once we click on steering and brakes, you're gonna notice that there's two different options. The first one is going to be steering wheel, gears, linkage, and front axle. However, going back to that 700,000 number there, that's gonna be your serial number. And you guys can see this is 701,000 and after. So because our serial number is 220503, we're looking at this diagram down here, which is going to be anything below 700,000. Now, once you pull up this diagram, it will give you everything for your specific riding mower. However, you guys are gonna notice right away that it still shows two different sector plates, and one of them, once again, has that removable teeth. So I just wanted to click on 32 to show you guys, if we go down here, that is a replaceable pad, and that is going to be for serial number 600,001 and up until 700,000. Obviously, we don't have that, so we are going to be using the 21A here. And if you go down here, it's gonna give you that number there. However, that has been superseded, and you guys can see that they want you to order the steering sector kit that I provided you guys the part numbers before. That's the GX25785BLE. Now, obviously, we already have the sector plate. We have the pivot bolt. We have a new bushing. The washer was there as well. What I was interested in is finding out if that bolt with that little bushing was correct for 
the guide bolt that goes right here. And in fact, it is not. Just as I had assumed, this probably fell out before and somebody just replaced it with a standard bolt and some type of stepped shoulder bushing. So the parts that we require are going to be a number 22. That is going to be a flange head shouldered screw, M8 by 28. And the part number for that is going to be an M153513. And then we're gonna come over here and we need the number 33, which is actually going to be a wave washer. And the part number for that one is a UC13624. Then we can come over here and click on number 35, which is going to be a big flat hardened washer. And the part number for that is going to be an E35778. And then we can click on the number 34, which once again, guys, this one only has one of those. And that's just gonna be a tiny little washer that they use as a spacer. And the part number for that is going to be an R48517. And then finally, because I don't wanna buy a new bolt without buying the lock nut that goes with it, all you have to do is line that up and that's going to be a number 12. And then we can look down here and that's going to be a prevailing torque nut commonly referred to as a nylock lock nut, part number 14M7396. And then by chance, if you guys don't have an adjustable drag link on your riding lawnmower, because I understand that some manufacturers build these riding lawnmowers with non-adjustable drag links, you can buy a newer adjustable drag link. Again, that is going to be a part number GY21250 for the front left side. My customer did mention that uh, the tire on the front left was wearing a little improperly, so it may just simply need a toe in or toe out adjustment on that front left tie rod. But with that being said, guys, I just wanted to quickly show you guys how to properly source your parts because if you didn't know that you were looking at a diagram for serial numbers above 700,000, then when you're looking at the diagram on this one here, you're gonna see it does have the two washers on top of that guide bolt that they're using for spacers, but only on D170s with a serial number higher than 700,000. But now that I know what parts this D170 should have, I'm going to get a new guide bolt wave washer hardened washer, small washer, and new lock nut on order. And that way everything can go back together as the manufacturer intended. All right guys, so parts just came in from John Deere. I have the shoulder bolt with the wave washer and that keeps tension up against this large flat washer here. So that gives it a little bit of compression. And then of course the smaller washer is going to fit up against the shoulder on that bolt there. Now I won't be using my impact to tighten this up. I'm just going to use my 90 degree ratchet for now. It is a 15 millimeter socket for the bolt head and then it's going to be a 13 mil for the nylock nut on top of the plate there. Additionally, John Deere doesn't say anything about greasing this or leaving it dry, so I am using just a little bit of grease on the top side of that large flat washer so that when it comes in contact with the rotating sector plate, it'll have a little bit of grease to allow it to slide a little bit easier. Now, it might be a little difficult, but with the wheels turned to the right, you'll have enough room to put your arm up in here under this plate to hold the nut. And then you just put the bolt through the sector plate and I have the lock nut started now so we can tighten that down. And I'll try to get a shot here for you guys. But once we do tighten that bolt down, you'll notice that it will compress that wave washer just enough to keep a little bit of pressure on that sector plate and eliminate that little bit of wobble compared to what it was before guys that thing's pretty solid so i think this should definitely be an improvement over what it was before and i think uh, that new tie rod once we get that installed will keep everything properly aligned also a little bit of lubricant on the steering bushings won't hurt that'll all drip down to lubricate that plastic bushing and last but not least make sure you're greasing your front steering spindles so that it reduces the amount of load put on your pinion gear and your sector plate making these steer a little bit easier. I'm using the lube shuttle pistol grip style grease gun to pump some grease into these spindles.
The nice thing about the lube shuttle is that when you're all out of grease, all you have to do is unthread the cartridge here. And once you guys get a new cartridge screwed in, all you have to do now is pump on the lever there until you see some grease coming out of the top dust cap or the bottom of the steering spindle. And that's it guys. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. I'm glad we were able to get this John Deere D170 all fixed up with the proper parts installed. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel up for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching. <laughs>